Hey class, um, we're trying something new. Uh, you guys are going to be watching the notes that we would typically do in class. This is Mr. McGregor. And Mr. Russ. All right, so in this um, video, we're going to talk about probability. Um, and we're going to relate this to what we've been talking about recently about genes. But just to highlight something here, when we talk about probability, we're talking about the likelihood that something will happen. And so... To give a, a couple examples, sometimes you'll hear people say like, oh yeah, like the, you know, if you get hit by lightning, the chances of you being hit by lightning another time increases. Uh, that's not true. The actual probability of you being hit by lightning is one out of 3,000 in the course of your life. That doesn't necessarily mean that if you are outside during 3,000 lightning storms in your life, you will definitely get hit. That is the probability that that could happen within your lifetime. Is it a possibility? Yes. But it doesn't mean it's definitely going to happen. So a second uh, instance of this could be the example of a person dying in a plane crash. Now, although it is a possibility that you could die in a plane crash, the probability of you actually dying in a plane crash turns out to be just 1 in 11 million Still, uh, you're more likely to die in a plane crash than you are to win the lottery. Uh, so don't play the lottery. Not a good idea. The probability of winning the lottery, uh, big time, is 1 in 13,983,000. So when we're talking about genetics, uh, we will actually be using probability to help us figure something out. Um, so it is like, it's possible that you might be uh, colorblind or you might give your color blindness to your child. But genetics, and specifically uh, the use of Punnett squares, actually shows you what that probability is. So what is the probability of you inheriting being uh, colorblind or actually you passing along your colorblind gene? All right, so before we continue with this slide presentation uh, and these notes, um, this is the first video that we've done, so I want to clarify a few things. You should be watching this, and you should also have this open in your Notability file, or in your Notability program, app, whatever. And we're kind of expecting you to pause the video at certain points and fill in the notes. You will need to submit these to Google Classroom. It's important. Uh, writing is an active part of learning, so you need to be writing down the things that we're saying on this particular presentation. Um, and we will expect you on several occasions to pause the video and answer some things that we haven't written down and that we'll talk about in class um, tomorrow. So, take accurate notes. Same thing that you would do if we were doing this in class. All right? Awesome. Okay, so probability plays a big part in the genetic makeup of offspring. So, just to you know, provide a little uh, context and to call back what we talked about in our last session. If you were part of the P generation, then your children would be the F1 generation. The offspring of the F1 generation would be the F2 generation, and so on and so forth. And, of course, probability is the likelihood that a particular event will occur. So, just to give you an example, flipping a coin and landing on heads, uh, the probability of that is 50%. Now, if you were to flip that coin a second time, let's say you got heads in the first one, does that mean the second time you'll definitely get tails? No, you still have a 50% chance of getting heads a second time. So, let's take a look at this in real time. Here we go, we have an example. All right, so we get the first flip. And we have heads. Now, if you had to guess, what do you think the probability of that guess will be? I'm going to go with that it's going to be heads again. Because I have a 50-50 chance. It doesn't matter what the first one was. I still have a 50-50 chance of it being heads. So let's see. And 10 points for Mr. Mac. So probability is used to... Uh, predict the genes of an offspring. And uh, you could kind of do this by yourself if you had the options of tall, short, or medium. If you had this uh, center in basketball, um, he 
name was Sean Bradley from back in the day. No one remembers him, but he was a seven six. And if he was to mate with the fifty foot woman, um, probability would probably your logic uh, would tell you that their children would probably be tall. But that's not always the case, uh, especially with genes, and especially when you have two organisms mating, where the uh, no one knows exactly. Uh, how maybe the genes will fall in an offspring. So let's say this 50-foot woman, instead of mating with uh, Sean Bradley of the Dallas Stars, mates with uh, Frodo, who is a hobbit. Um, she is tall. He is short. Um, would the children be medium? Maybe, but we would actually use um, what we're going to get into next, which is a uh, Punnett square. Uh, we will learn how to use that to actually have an accurate prediction. And so before we really break down uh, the Punnett squares, we want to make you aware of a few uh, key terminology points. So we have phenotype and genotype, and we'll be referring to those when we do uh, Punnett squares. So the first is phenotype. And the root of phenotype is pheno, which just means uh, to show. So the uh, Latin root of that, pheno, means to show. And it's the physical characteristics of an organism. All right, so if it's tall, if it's short, um, if it has brown hair, if it has blue eyes. Um, where genotype, the word geno, I think you could take a guess what that refers to. The root geno refers to genes. And that is the actual genetic makeup of that organism. So you can have organisms that have the same phenotype, but have different genotypes. If you take a look at this, uh, the genotype for this particular, let's say the 50-foot woman, um, is TT. That's tall. Um, but maybe she has an offspring with the genot genotype that has uh, big T, little t, it's still tall, so its phenotype is tall, but its genotype is different from another organism that's tall. I realize this may sound confusing. It'll make a little more sense when we break it down. Um, and then if you have two lowercase t's, um, that means you have the genotype for shortness, and the phenotype itself means you actually look short. So really the best way to break it up is phenotype is the physical characteristics, how it's described, and genotype is the actual genetic makeup of that organism. Punnett squares. Uh, so what does a Punnett square actually do? Well, a Punnett square usually looks like uh, just a square. Okay, So this is the main part to actually focus on. And uh, it shows all the possible gene combinations that may result from the genetic cross between mates. So when there are two parents mating, Okay, the parental generation or the parents mating, um, they will uh, create offspring, but you don't necessarily know what the offspring's uh, genes are going to be. So you use a Punnett square to figure that out. Uh, when you are setting up a Punnett square, um, so here we are, so here's the P generation, so these are the parents, uh, the mates, and uh, so here they are right here. You have a tall plant, and then you have a short plant, okay? Uh, what you're going to do is you are going to take their genes, and uh, we're going to just go ahead and do this arbitrarily. We're going to take these big T, big T, and we are just going to put them on the side. Each letter goes on uh, each of these mini squares within the whole square. Okay, You're going to put one of the genes here and the other here. Then here is the other parent, little t, little t, and you are going to Put that on top, okay? So that is how you're going to be setting up a uh, Punnett square to begin. We will be making more of these Punnett squares as we go Okay, along. so let's fill this one out together. And just to clarify, big T, big T means that the parent is tall. And little t, little t, this is a short parent. All right? Now, I like to think of a Punnett square kind of like a times table. Uh, when you're looking at your times tables, you have your numbers, 
you have them on a y-axis and you have them on an x-axis and they combine at the square where they intersect. So in this case, I'm going to put a big T here and a little t here. The big T comes from here and the little t comes from here. Um, in my next square, I'm going to do the same thing. I have one from the tall parent and one from the short parent. And I'm going to repeat that process in the bottom as well because this setup is the same. Big T from here and little t from there. So as we had said, here are the kids. Let me rephrase. That's not exactly the kids. This is what the kids may be. Um, it just so happens that each of these squares this time are all big T, little t. Sometimes that's not the case. You'll have uh, little t, little t, or, you know, it depends on what the parent combinations were. But in this case, uh, when this parent mates with that parent, um, these are the possibilities. And so what we go down here is if you look at this diagram on the side, um, let's focus now as the result. Okay, so they made it. Here's the result. And uh, that's the F1, right? There are the kids. The F1 is the children. And you'll notice that it says big T, little t, big T, little t, which makes sense because these are the only options. So let's say that they reproduced and they made two plants. So here's plant one. Here plants, uh, here's plant two. And uh, what we want to know is uh, what is the genotype and the phenotype of these plants? Okay, so the genotype, what would the genotype be? Well, the genotype is going to be the genes, so they are big T, little t, okay? So they have to be big T, little t, and you can see it right there. The question is, what would the phenotype be? So remember what phenotype meant, okay? So think about what phenotypes, what is the phenotype? And also think about the fact that there is not just a big T, there is a little t there. Consider the principle of dominance. So what is the big letter? What is the small letter? What does it mean? Who's dominant? And hopefully what you've thought about with the phenotype is that a big T, little t would make a tall appearance. And just to bring this back for a second to probability, which we were talking about um, in the previous slide, if you look at all of these, they're the same. It's a hundred percent probability that the genotype will be big T, little t, and that the offspring will be tall, 100 percent. And this is important, especially when we were talking about, as Mr. Ress had mentioned, the different possible parental uh, combinations. So that last example of the Punnett square we did was what Mendel did with his pea plants. Um, he made it a tall plant with a short plant and his expectation was that he would have a mixture of offspring, some tall, some short. And if you look back to what we did, we got 100% tall for the phenotype. Uh, so he was confused by this naturally. And so what he decided to do was take the two offspring, so the F1 generation, and he decided to mate them together. And yeah, they're brother and sister, or brother and brother, and that's a little weird, but they're plants, so it doesn't matter as much. And he wanted to see if he mated them if there were any short genes left. So let's set up this Punnett square together. I am going to take this parent, and I'm going to put him, her, well, plants are androgynous, right? So I'm going to put this plant over here. So I have a big T and a little t for that genotype. And then I'm going to take the other parent of the F1 generation, and I'm going to put that up top. And so I have a big T and a little t. And so similar to the process we did up there, I'm going to find these boxes where they meet and create a new genotype, a potential genotype for the offspring. So in the first box, I have big T, big T. In the second, I have big T from this parent and little t from this parent. And then in the bottom boxes, I have 
big T, little t. And on the last one, I have little t, little t. So we have a 75% chance of having tall plants, but we also have the possibility of having a short plant as well. Okay, just to take a second to uh, quickly look at um, this one in particular. So, you know, you understood when you were making the big T, big T, what you did is you took this T, you brought it across, you took this T, you brought it across. What happened here? Uh, it's just like when you write a word. If you're a professional, you know, what you do when you're a prof professional uh, punditer, I don't know, is you, uh, you take this T and you're going to bring it down and you're going to put it first because it's capitalized, okay? I don't know, the tall gene happens to get the royal treatment here. And then the little letter goes second, okay? And that's what we're going to kind of be doing. Uh, if you put little t, big t, you wouldn't be wrong, but uh, you're just kind of, you know, you, you can do better. And uh, then what we will be doing, what I would like you to do, follow along here, is uh, I want you now to uh, write the genotype, so genotype, okay, so write this down as well, genotype, phenotype, and what I want you to do is I want you to give me the genotype, so go ahead now, okay. what are the genotypes possible, write them all out, you can use commas between the genotypes, and than the phenotypes that they represent. So just working with the beginning, um, we're going to use this one right here, and we're going to say we got big T, big T. We got a little t, or a big T, little t. And then we have a little t, little t. Phenotypes, tall. And short. Now you could write tall again here, but um, all you really need to do is write tall once if both this one and that one represent a tall phenotype. And don't forget that when we are talking about the results of these Punnett squares and the phenotypes, we're talking about probability. So these two talls right here that we put, and again, you only need to list one. Um, if we look at this, we're talking about 75% chance that the plant will be tall, okay? And we have this one short genotype, and so out of our four Punnett squares, I think you all know how to do percents at this point. The leftover percentage is 25%. So it has a 25% chance. Uh, there is a 25% chance that the offspring will be small. Short. But small, too. Just so you know, uh, there is a functional component to Punnett squares. Um, it, it's not just to look at the genotype and phenotype of pea plants. But um, this can actually be used in real professions. So uh, when we talk about genetic syndromes and diseases and conditions, um, there is actually a big career uh, in genetic counseling. People who consult with families and look through their hereditary uh, records and genes to try and figure out what the percentage is, uh, percentage chance is that these, you know, a, a parent's offspring will have a genetic condition. Um, and that's important to some people. You know, there may be um, a, a life-threatening genetic condition that occurs in um, a family's history, and they want to know what the chances are, if they have children, that that child will suffer the same genetic condition. So this is actually a disease that affects my, uh, well, affected my family in particular um, because I, one of my cousins has a daughter who actually was born with cystic fibrosis, and uh, it was it kind of came to a, a big surprise to everybody because uh, my cousin does not have uh, cystic fibrosis. Um, she is a female, 
Okay, so that's usually the symbol for female. And um, her, uh, she does not have cystic fibrosis. Um, and that is because she has one good uh, allele. Okay, and um, I guess, clearly, she must have had one of the bad alleles. Now, why do I know which is which? Well, we had said that cystic fibrosis is recessive. So we're going to put a little f for cystic fibrosis and a big F for normal. Okay, So she uh, is normal because her dominant normal gene covers up her cystic fibrosis gene. Well, it just so happened that she met a guy and uh, he happened to be a what's called a carrier as well of the cystic fibrosis allele. And so, um, you know, the big question was if he and her mated um, for a second time and had a second child, what exactly are the chances that they would have another child with cystic fibrosis? And this is a true-to-life real case. This is, this is surprisingly as simple as cystic fibrosis is. What are the, what is the percent, what is the probability that their son or daughter would be born with cystic fibrosis? And that will actually be the uh, bell quiz for tomorrow. So I would like you to figure out this Punnett square. Uh, I want you to also figure out the uh, genotype and phenotype, okay, the possible genotypes and the uh, phenotypes of the children, okay, including the percents. So what percent uh, chance is there of them having a child with cystic fibrosis? The second question is actually going to be, uh, if they had four children, uh, figuring out, having figured out the Punnett square, if they had four children, um, what would be the chances that each one of those children would have cystic fibrosis? To clarify, um, for the purpose of getting you guys to understand Punnett squares, we have been referring to uh, the alleles as big T, big T, little t, little t, big T, little t. Um, but if you were a pro-scientist, you would say something like, actually not something like, you would say exactly, you would say if it was uh, a big T, big T uh, organism or had big T, big T alleles, you would say that that organism is homozygous. And again, the root Homo, meaning same, okay? So we can see that it has two identical alleles, two of the same alleles. If the organism had different alleles, um, so when we looked at the F1 generation of offspring from those two, from the P generation of P plants, um, those were heterozygous, okay? And that means that it has two different alleles for a certain trait or gene, big T, little t. Um, so these are good terms for you guys to know. We may refer to them, probably will in a test in the future, homozygous and heterozygous. And fortunately, you guys know what those root words mean. We talk a lot about root words in this class. And it's important to remember that homo means same and hetero means different. So that's it for today's notes. Um, please make sure you fill these out thoroughly, uh, save a copy in your notability, and then upload a copy of these notes to the Google Classroom in the respective folder assignment submission that we have set up on there. Um, this is Mr. McGregor. Uh, Mr. Russ. Uh, we will see you for the next set of video notes in the future. Bye.